Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm gonna call this meeting of GOL to order. It is 1031 on Wednesday, October 6th, um, and we are being recorded. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and I will provide instructions if needed. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. Um, I'm just gonna make sure, first of all, that all the committee members can be heard. And I'm gonna start with Mandy. Present. And Darcy. Yes. And Pat. Present. And we have a guest this morning, Andy Steinberg from the Finance Committee is going to be uh, joining us for the first part of our meeting. So Andy, just to confirm yes. that you can be heard, thank you. Okay. And again, uh, Emily, thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna put the, uh, all right. I'm going to put our agenda up on the screen so we can look at it together. And so this morning, what we have on our agenda is we're gonna start with review of selection criteria for FinCom. Um, we're going to discuss interview questions um, and hopefully if we can come to some decision about those and we'll brief, briefly review the timeline and make sure that everyone's uh, agreeable to that. And then we have a surveillance technology bylaw that we're going to consider. Um, and then we have some minutes. Um, we have September 29, we actually have two other minutes and we'll deal with that when we get to it. Um, I have no items unanticipated. Um, so we're going to go through this in the order that it is presented here. So I'm going to begin by putting up on the screen the, uh, let me put this away. I'm going to put up the draft document that we had last time for FinCom selection. And I had sent an email to uh, Andy, who is chair of FinCom, and asked him to uh, look it over and he does have some thoughts and comments. So I thought we would start with that and then we'll go to the document and see if we can um, reach some consensus and, and vote on it. So Andy, if you'd like to begin with your thoughts uh, on the document as it stands at the moment. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate your inviting me to be at the meeting to say this in person. I had sent an email to George um, about my reaction. Um, you know, I think that the first sentence, um, the first one, is strong, and I, I'm actually um, fine with all of it. But it was sort of uh, what I thought was missing, as opposed to what um, was there. Because I do think that a strong base of seasoned members is important. And when I look back at the people who have been in the position of uh, the resident members in the past, uh, uh, Mary Lou, uh, Bob Hagner, uh, Bernie Kubiak, and Jane Shuffler, you know, I think that they have all um, contributed in the way that we thought that they would. Um, the one thing that kind of struck me is that uh, when I um, was looking at the CAFs coming in and thinking, is there anything else that I would suggest? And I'm going to try and uh, see if I can uh, do one thing uh, by getting full screen up. What I had said to George was that I felt that what was missing is the need uh, to make sure that there's a, com a commitment of anybody coming on the committee to complete a full three-year term, even if they're being appointed for a partial term. Um, and the reason that I had made that statement was because the one thing that I think that we have experienced in finance committee, whether it be on the old finance committee from the old form of government or the current finance committee to the council, is that the issues 
are complex. The rules of municipal finance are complex. And uh, that uh, a budget cycle is really needed to even begin to understand the full complexity of how municipal finance works. And that uh, not having people who are committed for the long term becomes a problem. Uh, and a, a second aspect to that that's then very important is that there also be um, a, an understanding and a commitment to being available to attend um, all meetings um, in, with a reminder that they are going to be in person uh, beginning in January and that um, the, the, we um, have times that the committee is meeting during the day and uh, that that has been agreed to by the entire committee. It's not going to be possible to shift it for people coming in. So that um, is a criteria as you're looking at people that it's worth asking because if it turns out that they're not available to meet at the times that the committee is meeting, I'm not sure that it's a reasonable choice. Um, and uh, the last question um, that I wanted you to at least think about, because I certainly was thinking about it, is the question of the length of residence uh, um, that somebody has had in the community and the knowledge they have about the community. Because what I think we're trying to do by bringing in uh, the, and this is based upon our experience again, bringing in the finance committee uh, members who are not counselors is to either provide um, a knowledge that is not there amongst um, members and contributing something. And I can give some examples of that or um, a second, and I shouldn't say or, and the second piece, which is a knowledge of the community and a commitment to the community. Um, I was very disappointed that Ms. Scheffler was not able to continue. I think she was a really good choice. She had good background in academics that made it um, worthwhile to bring her in. She'd served on another committee on the Historic Commission. Uh, she <clears throat> has kids. She lives in the community. Um, and uh, her reasons for leaving, I understand. And, um, yes. you know, they were personal to her. So that th th those are that's sort of the summary of what I had said to George and um, what um, and I'll turn it back then, Darren. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Andy's raised three issues. Um, first of all, just a, a slight clarification that the uh, term is two years. Um, so it's one year for voting members and two years for, uh, for non-voting members. Um, but the idea of a, of a commitment to the full term, an understanding of the need to be available to all or most meetings and that the schedule really ramps up in April and in May. Um, and then knowledge of the community sort of length of residence in Amherst is the three things that I'm hearing. From Andy. Andy, am I missing anything else before I turn to other comments? And I think that that's the major one. I did think about one other and then decided that it was not a factor, and that is the question of filling terms uh, midway because uh, fire uh, normally at the end of the budget season, bringing somebody in it, during the budget season has um, an additional challenge to it. But um, after thinking about that one a little bit, I decided not to raise it as a separate issue uh, because I didn't feel as strongly about it if we were addressing the other points because if you have somebody who has a multi-year commitment, that will even out. And the benefit of bringing them, I, I was thinking of it in terms of 
the fact that persons should be joining the committee right at the time we're changing council members and that we're uh, also in the midst of um, working through the budget guidelines questions, which was the other heavy part of the year. Um, you know, I think we'll just deal with it and I will have some meetings with the person you choose and bring them up to speed adopted yeah. by the council. Yeah. So that was the other thing. Good. Um, let's hear comments from uh, my colleagues. Uh, Mandy, I think you had your hand up first. Yeah, um, Andy, I, I appreciate the, the feedback and the, the thoughts. Um, I do have some concerns. Number one, we start a new council in January. There's no guarantee that the 2 p.m. Tuesday meeting time will stay the same. Um, and so I don't think we need to be conditioning an appointment on having to have that ability when new counselors come in, they're going to be able to, you know, indicate their desire for whatever committee they want. The new president, whoever that is, will be able to appoint that. And then that entirely new committee will have to pick a new time um, that suits every member of that committee. And we were, I, I tremendously hope we're not assigning, the president is not assigning committee membership based on prior council's decisions on when the meetings happen. So, you know, it, it's important for the next three months because I don't expect the finance committee to change a point uh, times between now and January, but come January, that's all up in the air. So I would hesitate putting it on here versus just asking about the next three months. Um, and, and along with that, I guess I look at the best of people and assume if they are applying to fill a position that their intention is to fulfill a full term and stuff happens yeah. um, <laughs> and you just never know. So I, you know, I, I agree the intention to fill a full term is there, but we can't force someone to because stuff happens. Um, and I think we just have to acknowledge that, that, that we need to think the best of people that they always intend to fulfill the term they're appointed for. And maybe for a partial term, I, I don't know. I think, I don't remember whether Ms. Scheffler's term was set to expire. What we're filling is set to expire Jan July, June of 2022 or June of 2023. I forget which one she was, which cycle she's in. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you just never know. So, you know, I, I think I would hesitate to specifically put them into a selection guidance. Any other comments uh, that I'm going to turn to Pat? Okay. Um, so yeah, Pat, please. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, George. Um, I agree with Mandy Joe on the two points that uh, the points that she brought up, but I also want to discuss length of residence and knowledge of, of living in Amherst. I don't want to see that as part of the selection criteria because um, <laughs> that we're looking for people who bring certain kinds of experience and they may have municipal finance experience from Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, and they've moved to Amherst. And that seems like, oh, Hoboken is so different than Amherst, it won't fit, but they may be bringing new insights and um, new awarenesses to this community. Also, given the divisions that exist, and we can't pretend they don't exist in this town, uh, uh, I have, I think in, in many ways, it would be refreshing to have new blood, not a person who was for the library, opposed to the library, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I, I really hesitate to, to want to consider the length of a person's residence in Amherst. Okay, um, Darcy, any thoughts or comments on any of this? I would agree with both what Mandy Joe said and what Pat just said. Yeah, good. I think we have a consensus here that um, what I'm hearing is that um, what we have, we're gonna go in a moment to the actual document, but what I'm hearing is that at the moment, there's nothing that anyone feels they need to add, at least relative to these issues of, of uh, extent of length of service in town, you know, residents in town. Um, we can look at the, um, uh, the handout, which does talk about the commitment of time. Um, 
And I'm not sure, I'm not hearing anyone saying we need to say anything special about, um, a, a, you know, you need to commit the Mandy's point and the point of, of the rest of the committee seems to be that that's just assumed. And of course, part of what will gauge is the best we can gauge it is in the interviews, um, the level of a person's commitment to the degree that they seem to be engaged and, and knowledgeable of the process, which is why the interviews are so important. So what I'm hearing is that there's nothing for us to add based on what Andy has presented um, today in terms of his comments. Um, is that fairly correct? Nobody, want, nobody has some bullet point they, they think needs to be put in. Um, so what I wanna do is turn to the document itself um, and begin to go through it, make sure that we're happy with it and what changes we need to make, we'll make them now and then vote on it. I just wanted to check and I apologize, Mandy raised a good point. When does um, Ms. Scheffler's term expire? And I just checked the, uh, the web page. Maybe Andy, maybe you can answer that because the web page actually she's been removed because she has resigned. And so I don't have the year. Uh, Hegner's term uh, ends in 23. Uh, Kubiak's term ends next year in 22. Um, Andy, do you know when, uh, my guess is it would, well, I just can't remember right now. Do you know? I'm not, I'm not certain. So I think that I would probably not want to venture um, a guess on that. If we were to grant whoever is but, given uh, this term, yeah, whoever is given this term, I assume it would be a two-year term. And so um, they would be, uh, it would be 2024 for them. So we would have actually um, them completely spread out, uh, 22, 23, and 24 is what, so, um, all right. So I wanna go to this document. Um, what we did last time. George, I had my hand up. For... I'm sorry, Andy, please. I missed that. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I appreciate, Mandy, your point about um, the time of day of the meeting. So I guess that when you're back to it, it's really a question of understanding that it is a committee decision as to when to meet and that all committee members who are appointed to committees have to um, accommodate to a group decision, but not to assume that it's going to be the same as it was. Um, I think that that was a, uh, I, I appreciate that point that was raised. Um, as far as um, inquiry, and I don't know how you build this into the criteria because I, I agree that um, you know, a lot is based on interviews. But um, if you have somebody who is applying, who is in the community, for a short period of time um, or possibly longer, but not with a commitment to be here longer. For example, um, a university student, since there are, so, um, that, that is always possible. Uh, then you get into the question as to whether the person has a, um, has a plan that is going to, uh, be able to commit. And I, 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 I very much urging in the screening process that that be a part of the inquiry to make sure that there's at least an intent to be here as there was with Jane Scheffler, an intent to continue to serve uh, and it not be just something that's jumped into as a transitory kind of um, question. And because uh, I'm not certain that this process of having resident members, no other committee has resident members. And I'm not sure that it's going to work for the finance committee in the future. But I do feel like it has worked well in the past, which was a question that we were asked last time. And it's worked because uh, the, we've selected good people um, who have the commitment and have the knowledge base. The last thing that I was just going to point um, say is, is that I understand, uh, Mandy, your point about, or, or whoever it was, maybe it was uh, uh, Pat who said about it, used the, the New Jersey uh, example. Uh, Bob Hegner 
um, but had not um, had lived in Amherst for a while, but hadn't worked in Amherst for a while, but it brought incredible insights because of his work experience. And that certainly needs to, to, to always be a factor. Um, it's not necessarily finance experience in Massachusetts, but he did have government finance experience, which right. was what made yeah. so valuable. I'm just going to point out to everyone that we actually do have a council appointed committee that's composed entirely of residents. And it's been a source of some frustration to many of us, um, not the work they're doing, which is tremendous, but the challenge of commitment. And I think looking back, this is speaking for myself, I uh, would, I, we made a decision not to do interviews because of the time pressure. And I regret that now. Um, because I do think that interviews give us an opportunity to get a sense of the person and a sense of, you know, just by asking basic questions. I mean, not, I don't think you can ask a question directly, like, are you serious? I mean, that would be insulting. But I think if we had had a chance to interview um, the candidates, or we, if we had taken the time to do so, I mean, there are good reasons why we didn't because of the time pressures. But I feel that we might not have had the challenge we've had with the DAB um, because we didn't actually have interviews and we didn't have a chance to just sort of see the person and, and just talk to them. Um, we appointed people um, without interviews. So that's just a little lesson for me um, that I take away. Um, but we do in fact have a committee that is composed of residents that is appointed by the council. Um, but it's only every 10 years. So <laughs> I doubt, I can speak for myself here only, but I, I know I can say pretty much with absolute certainty that I will not be on <laughs> that council. Um, and uh, so can we go to the document? Are people okay? Uh, I think it's on your screen. We added uh, last time standard selection guidance for non-voting members of the finance committee. My understanding is we, we added that. I don't remember if it was Darcy's suggestion, but the thought was trying to create a sort of, you know, we don't wanna be reinventing the wheel every time. We don't wanna be doing this every time. Uh, I think, I hope that GOL has to make an appointment to FinCom um, that, so we may tweak it. Uh, that's perfectly within our right. But I think the thought was that this is sort of something we hope that going forward would be sort of the basic uh, template model. And it would probably be a very unusual circumstance that it would get changed. So it could be. So I think that's the point of standard. Is that the point we made last time as opposed to just selection guidance for? Because um, I know that C I have CRCs, I could put CRCs up. Um, actually, it was, it was um, I'm sorry, it was your interview question that I wanted to share later in the meeting if, if we want, but um, that actually had a date. So we're not saying selection guidance for non-voting members of finance committee uh, for uh, this particular date. This is a general document that uh, going forward, we hope we can use over and over again. And I thought that was the point of standard. Am I correct or am I forgetting something? Which very likely. Pat? Why, why do we put standard in? Pat? You're, you're muted, Pat. I, I wasn't responding to your question, which I dropped. So I dropped my hand from a, um, I want to ask a question. So if somebody else has a response to you, that'd be fine. Does anyone remember why we put standard in? I know it against for it. the I reasons just... you said, and because okay, the new fine. policy allows us to adopt standard. So yes. I think fine. Sorry, sorry to belabor it. Um, Pat, please go ahead. Yeah, my question is, because uh, we're going to be working on interview questions, have we solicited questions from the council, which is oh, part of our right. policy? Right. Um, no, we and have not. And it happen. We have hmm? not. We have not. The answer is no. Chair has not done that. Okay. Um, so. Thoughts about the first section? I think that we're okay on all that. So if you're not, please raise your hand. Otherwise, we're gonna to go to section two. And these are the criteria. Selection of resident members shall be based on relevant experience, skills, and policy knowledge with an emphasis on municipal and public finance. Qualifications might include the following. And there they are. So anything anyone wants to add? Is there anything anyone wants to take out? So it's not related to that paragraph. Um, well, then let's, let's do paragraph by paragraph. Okay. Do you wanna go backwards? <laughs> No, it, I'm okay. going forward. Sorry. No, let's not go forward. Uh, um, Andy, uh, any uh, thoughts? Andy, you're here. I, I assume the committee's okay with um, Andy offering his thoughts if he has any. 
because we have him here as the FinCom chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it's not. So Andy, is there anything that either in the wording or other bullet point that you might suggest? Go ahead. Um, again, I, I don't think that I, um, I, I really think you guys did a great job with um, the criteria as they are on the screen now. And uh, when you get to the, um, if I did an additional bullet, it would be again along the lines of uh, willingness and ability to make a commitment of, and I'll let you put in a number of years, but I would put in, uh, you know, at least two of service to the committee. Um, I'm afraid, Andy, that's going to conflict with um, our other stated you policies. Make, you can't keep. Yeah. In other words, the idea is that um, we have agreed as a council that um, every vacancy is treated as a vacancy. Every vacancy um, is treated, every opening is treated as a vacancy. And while we do give preference to um, you know, prior service and we take that very seriously, um, asking in this formal document that someone consider a commitment beyond the two years would I think conflict directly with our stated policy that, um, right? So I don't see how we can do that. Um, Mandy? No, that's why I, I lowered, the, I, did, I didn't say a specific number, of, I said at least two, but. Well, see, that's the problem. That, I mean, I it's a two-year that. appointment. <laughs> it's but a two-year appointment. If somebody is only able to make a one-year commitment, I that would be a problem. Yeah. Um, not only, I think that would be really problematic. Andy. I'll address that. It's only problematic if the appointment is for a two-year term. If the appointment's for a one-year term, that's the only commitment they're making, um, especially based on our current recommendation. But what I was going to say, which is very nitpicky and just our clarity consistency thing, two of the bullet points have ORs. The third one does not, do we need ORs at all? The second and third have OR. Um, I wonder if the and second or. and third were supposed to be one bullet point, training or expertise, training expertise in economics, finance, policy, or comparable areas, or experience interest in municipal finance, or were they supposed to be separate bullet points? And if they're supposed to be separate, I would get rid of both ORs. Yeah, yeah, right. I agree. The oars. I don't. What is the point of the oars here, Pat? I'm sorry. Andy, your hand's still up. If you have a thought. No. Yeah, the oars seem. Uh, I think it should just be. Um, anyone? I, I think they should go. I, I think the idea is simply that you know it's not. Um, right. Qualifications might include. Might them. include, yeah. Exactly. That so I think we can get rid of both ORs and leave four bullet points instead of combining it into three bullet points. I think so. I think that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Anyone else? Darcy, please. I think the original um, was training expertise in economics, finance, policy, or comparable areas, or experience, interest in municipal finance, to give it a broader, you know, to have a broader possibility of who could apply for that. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's actually just one bullet point. Um, at, like and Mandy Joe, I think just said, is that the second and third, I think, are intended to go together. Okay. Um, because those are the areas, you know, the expertise or interest areas. Um, and the other two bullets are different, obviously. I, yeah. Uh, so you're suggesting that um, two and three become one, and that's where the or would come in. Right. I think that if we look back, we no. would see that that that's, is actually what it was. Yeah, and I agree with Darcy, that's... Okay, so the idea is that you could be either someone who has 
on expertise or training in economics, finance, policy is it, what does policy mean actually? I mean, like policy, like forestry, forestry policy or, uh, you know, <laughs> George, I mean, stop it. No, I'm serious. I mean, what, what, I know you. right. What Maybe, is policy? Did it say finance policy at one point? I know. I, we add know, an extra comma. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I mean, honestly, these are these are right. We're trying to get this is important. It's just for us so, to get clear, right? And so, interest. We could delete ex- policy, or we could add um, fiscal in front of it. So, fiscal policy or right, comparable right, areas, right, right? And then combine, and then undelete that, or and the delete the and and make it so that that's part. That third bullet point is part of the second. Yeah. yeah, and that's where I'm struggling a bit. I, I hear that this is what we were thinking earlier, um, but um, you're talking about training or expertise, and then you're talking about interest, and that's another word that bothers me because, yeah, I'm interested. I, I'm very interested in municipal finance. I just don't have the time to, to, to devote to it. So the fact that somebody says, yeah, I'm interested, um, doesn't mean much to me, but experience, it means something. So you know, uh, if somebody comes to me without any background in finance, uh, fiscal policy or comparable areas or experience in municipal finance, but says, you know, I'm really, really interested in this. That means that's zilch for me. I mean, because I'm really, really interested in it, too. And I wish I had, you know, the background and the knowledge to, to actually do right. So yeah. I would suggest taking out interest and just or experience. That's uh, go ahead, Pat. I'm sorry. Darcy. Well, I, I guess I don't agree oh, because. Pat. Yep. Sorry, Darcy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I didn't mean to have my hand up. Okay, go ahead, Pat, please. I The only reason I'm on the finance committee, which I think it's the, my second year, Andy, right. um, was because I was interested in municipal finance, not because I knew Jack Bahookies, um, Yeah, right. about it. And so we're we're talking about i mean if a person only has interest in municipal finance and they've done nothing uh in the other areas um and not even trained or something like that i, I don't think that they would get my vote okay but if they have some not evidence. having okay experience okay. in municipal finance is feels okay to me as long as there is an honest interest and because it evidence, may be expanding yeah. what right. their they their knowledge base. But you'd see you'd like to see some evidence of that interest other than yeah. just somebody saying, I'm really, really interested. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you'd like to keep it. I've inserted fiscal, but that could come out. Um, Pat would like to keep it as it is. Uh, Darcy, please. Um, I would like to keep it. Oh, I didn't I don't know why my hand keeps going up. Because you raised it. <laughs> I don't think I, I did not raise it. I don't know. Look, see, I just put it down. It's, it's really funny. Down. It goes down and then goes immediately back up. All right. Yeah. yeah you probably it, press it, it too hard. Or so, so, Darcy, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand from now on, okay? <laughs> when you want to speak. Okay. No, seriously, um, because otherwise I'll be calling on you and you're going to keep right. no, it, it, Leave me it's alone. Doing it, it's doing it by itself. I don't know I what's going I understand. on. So what um, I'm going to do here, uh, while um, sorry, let me. I'm just going to take. Well, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. How do people feel about that? Good. Uh, the semicolon be after areas should be removed. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Spoken like a true GOLer. <laughs> My mantra. I wonder if there's like some future, uh, you know, business or uh, career opportunity for us once we're done with this. In the field. <laughs> nitpicking people's work. Exactly right. I mean, we could become professional nitpickers. All right. So I hear that this is. Thank you, uh, Darcy. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mandy. This is actually what probably we did. So fiscal is, I think, is okay. Economics, finance fiscal policy or comparable areas. Okay, all right. And then this is consistently available for meetings, particularly during budgeting season, which is normally May and June. And my thought is that these kinds of issues can be raised during the interview process, or we can shape a question that would, uh, I hope, address this and a person would have to speak to it 
Um, and also it is addressed in the uh, handout. Um, so it's here, it's in the handout. And then I think the interview, an interview question could be crafted that would also get at it um, to address Andy's concern about, you know, whether people understand what they're getting into and whether they, as far as we can tell, they have a sincere commitment to it. Um, Andy, your hand is up. Yes, your hand is up because uh, I just want to, the, I, I agree with the idea that interest in um, the area of municipal finance can qualify somebody to serve on the committee, but that's where it gets back into the um, other issue that I have, which is um, George or Pat, you have interest in it, but you want to get, invo um, get involved. I think that that's exactly what we want. But um, it, as I think that you probably have observed too, it takes a budget cycle to get even an understanding of how the full process works. And that it takes time, which is why um, my feeling that if somebody comes in, they can't say that I'm going to stay with me for at least two years. And I've lowered it to two for the reasons that we've all talked about. But it then gets into the question, well, interest, but not being able to make a two-year commitment is probably doing a disservice to the committee and not a service to the committee. So, um, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Somebody got a hand up. Uh, I'd like to move along if I could, uh, but Pat, please go ahead. Well, I, I was just gonna say, um, Jane made a real commitment and she wasn't able to keep it. Right. And, and she didn't keep it because it was overwhelming to have a kid and have two twins. And that's not a question you can ask in an interview, but it came up for me and was one of the reasons I thought about not selecting her. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I think people, this is my distrust. People say what they think they need to say to get something they want. So I don't think that anybody would answer, oh, no, no, I'm only interested in, in the six month position. You know, they're, and, and they, you know, I, I don't know. And I, I, I think her reason for, for resigning was legitimate. Oh, but, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and right. We made a good choice. We made a good choice. And, yeah, you know, yeah. um, she was a, a superb member. So yeah, I don't think there's any um, uh, right. benefit so, here in, in going over this. I, what I'm worried about- so Just I, putting uh, it in there doesn't, right. no. it's not gonna mean right. anything. Right. The response is not gonna mean anything, right. Right. intentionally or not. Right, I agree. Um, I'd like to go to Mandy because she had a point about the next, um, uh, yeah. If you, yeah, please, Mandy. The, the added paragraph that I know you copied directly from our recommendation, seems yep. odd in a selection guidance document because it's more of a process. What do we do before we adopt selection right. guidance? Not that is our selection guidance. So I would just delete that whole red paragraph that you added. So we do have a process document, which I can dig up. But your thought is that what I, the chair should do is make sure that this is in the process document. And if it's not in the process document, we should amend that at the next meeting is what I'm hearing. Is that correct? The council adopted the process document. Right. And no, no, there. we have we have <laughs> our own we, we have our own document. I mean, um, I'm it, sorry. it is what, in the process document. I'm that sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Sorry. So this just gets deep sixed. I'm going to deep six it unless I hear a scream from anybody. All right. I don't hear anything. So goodbye. And we also decided to get rid of this. Correct. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of it. Um, uh, now, um, before I do that, Andy has his hand raised. I know he does, and I'm going to raise oh, sorry. him in a second. But I'd like to complete my thought. Um, sorry. Before, that's all right. Before we do this, this is a challenge that I know Mandy has faced and I have faced, which is making clear to people that there is a preference, that it does exist, um, and they should be aware of that. 
um, without saying yeah or nay, just, and how do we do that? Or should we do that? I mean, in other words, you could just say caveat emptor, right? I mean, if you put your face self forward, it's your job to do a little bit of homework. Um, and I guess I'm asking a dumb question. Where is this statement easily available to the public at large so that someone who's considering serving on uh, this body or any body that we appoint understands that there is this preference stated in our official policy? That's my question. Maybe the answer is, well, they just it's on the website. Just go look it up. Or we could send it. I mean, you could have uh, the chair could send it. Um, of course, that's, you know, information overload at some point where you, they get so many documents. Um, or the thought could be, you know, it's not our job to tell them this. Um, you know, so that's my question. And I see three hands raised, and I assume they're all relevant to my question. And I'm going to start with the committee members, then go to Andy. So I, Darcy, please. I guess I think that um, it. I don't know. I think that it makes sense to include this because it's related to selection, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, and I agree that if we don't uh, let applicants know, that's. I mean, they should know about yes. the, about this this piece of our policy. Um, so yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would advocate for um, putting it in there just so people understand that we're, that, 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 that is a factor that we're looking at. Right. No. I, okay. That was kind of my thinking at the moment. Mandy, please. So yeah, we don't have an FAQ yet. We don't have a handout that's sort of a brief version of the process that the council just adopted to help people understand right, right. and so logically that would be where this would go to me um but we don't have that and so i think a selection guidance might be the logical place to put it absent that type of document however yep. the paragraph that is sitting right here is not what the current process policy is. Yeah, I hear and you. So if yeah, we're going yeah. to put one in, we yeah. need to copy the section five from the council policy in its entirety and exactly. And this is not it. Um, and so I can't support keeping what's lined out here in. I can support keeping section five of the council policy that was recently adopted in, in its entirety. Yeah, I would suggest- Can I say one other thing? Sorry, oh, Darcy. Sorry. The other thing I meant to say is if we're going to keep it in, we should indicate whether there is a potential reappointment person being considered because that's the other reason to keep this in. And in this case, there is not. Um, but I think if we're going to include this, we need to include that information because other people won't know. Um, well, that's, that's where I get a little, it makes me a little nervous. Um, I want people to be aware of the policy, but I don't want to tilt the scale one way or the other. The fact that somebody is up for um, or is asking for a second or even a third term, if we stated that explicitly here, would seem to be saying wink, wink, nod, nod. And, um, I, and I, that bothers me. I guess at that point, I feel like it's up to the individual to do their homework. If they're serious about this at all, they, well, having read this statement, they, the first question they would reasonably ask, I would think, would be, is there someone seeking reappointment? And I think it's on them to get the, they can, they can reach out to us and ask. I mean, it's easily answered. We're not trying to keep it a secret, but putting it in the actual document seems to be sort of tilting things in a certain direction that makes me uncomfortable. I don't mind stating it. I think that's important so they know, but the next step is really up to them. And they could email the chair. They could just go online and look. Um, but I'm uncomfortable putting it in here. That's my immediate reaction. Darcy, please. I think I'd agree with um, George there. And I was just going to suggest that it, we might um, have a heading over it that just is the word reappointments, you know, just so that people understand that that is, right. that's the policy. And I would think that people applying would 
um, would understand that because if they're applying, they would, and they are in it for the long haul, they would like the idea of possibly having a preference for being reappointed themselves. Um, right, they'd like to see so, that stated. So yeah. they, it would just be like, okay, well, yeah, I get why they're doing that. So what I'm seeing here is that I would insert, I like the idea of a header, but let's see what people think. We'd say, we basically say, well, let's see what we have here. We have, we don't have headers. We just have, um, so maybe we just, just read town council uh, uh, a policy, sorry, on reappointments. And then this would go, yeah. actually, let me just do it. This would go below it. And because I hear, um mandy's point that if we're going to put this in it should be the actual policy not this version of it which is not complete um and so i'm going to just we agree this is coming out so um and then let's see i think i just screwed that up okay wait a second maybe it, no, i didn't all right hey i'm getting good at this okay so what i'm hearing or i'm, I'm suggesting is that we uh, add and i wouldn't even I, I, do I want me to underline it or just say, it would just say town council policy on reappointments and- um, I would put it in either bold or underline. Okay, so maybe just leave it as underline. Yeah, fine. And then I would just copy and paste the policy and that's it. And that's the document. And I think that's really, really looks good to me. What are the thoughts of the rest of you? Are you okay with that? So putting in this header underline adding in verbatim the section five of the council policy document. We've talked about this. We agreed to this last time. We're gonna keep standard. Um, any other suggestions, thoughts, or concerns? Seeing and hearing none, I'm going to then make a motion that we um, approve, or excuse me, adopt um, the standard selection guidance for non-voting members of the finance committee as amended today. Second. So we have a motion, it's been seconded. Any further thoughts on this? Seeing none, I'm gonna move directly to a vote and I'm gonna start uh, with Pat. Aye. And I go to uh, Darcy. Yes. And Mandy. Yes, aye. And, and the chair is an aye, so the vote is four in favor, none against and one member absent to adopt this as our official policy, our official selection guidance, excuse me, for non-voting members of the finance committee. Um, very good. Um, let me just do this. Well, I'm just gonna close it for the moment. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna put this over there and hopefully I won't lose it. All right. Um, oh. Excuse me while I get my thoughts together. I want to go to interview questions. Uh, and I would like, uh, as I said, I hope Andy has time if he will stay. Um, and I realize I've not, I'm going to put a document up on the screen for us to look at. And um, basically, we're going to brainstorm. And if we find we just can't do it uh, because we don't have the time, because we do need to get to something in a few minutes, we may have to come back to this. But I'm hoping. Um, that we can do it. So, um, I'm looking for this. Okay, all right, hang on for a minute, guys. Sorry. Um, all right, this is 06. There's a timeline, interview questions. Here we go. All right. So this is the point in the meeting where I'll be talking about last night's game, but I don't think any of you are really that interested. Maybe Andy might be, but finance committee. All right, here we go. Did you watch any of the uh, dance documentaries? I haven't, I haven't gotten there yet, Pat, um, but I, it's, thank you. I, I know the title and it's on Netflix and it's, on, it's in my queue. It sounds wonderful. It's better than a game. Uh, well, let's just say there are different pleasures in life, and this is just a different pleasure, that's all. Uh, I'm very fond of games. I was very bad at them as a child, but I, I really like them. All right, so Gio, this is just something I cobbled together 
um, partly using uh, my uh, thanks to Mandy, just took this recent uh, 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 zoning board interview questions and sort of just played around with them a bit. Um, none of this obviously is written in stone. I very much want to obviously to have us uh, just brainstorm here. Um, so, but this is what uh, CRC has done. So notice down below are sort of just sort of some statements about um, how the process works so that the candidates know that they have so many minutes, blah, 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 blah. And I thought that was nice. And then there's, you know, if you have questions, you can reach out to the chair. So I copied yeah, 15 that. 15 seconds to answer question seven. No, I, I, exactly. <laughs> no. So that would be the equivalent of question six here. Right. Currently, the Finance Committee meets uh, from, and I'd fill this in, and Andy can help us, but I, I just didn't have time to look it up. And when, you know, so it, please confirm that you have the time to commit to this meeting schedule. And, and I would, we can fix the wording here, or you can trust me to fix it, but, um, and that would be basically question six. Yeah. And we don't have to do this. We, we can just keep it as a question. They can answer it as long as they want. Um, we, we wanted the CRC wanted to be clear that we were expecting a yes or no answer and not some <laughs> big yeah, long I, explanation. Yeah, but, good, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? In a way, this is just like raising a flag and just sort of it's not really a question because nobody's going to say no. <laughs> right? As Pat pointed out, nobody's going to say, you know, I really don't have I only want to be on it for three months and then I'm going to go to Tahiti. Um, so um, it's really a kind of pro forma thing to meet Andy's genuine concern and our concern that that um, it could even be have you read um, something to the effect of have you read the the committee handout and are you aware of that and uh, are you comfortable with that commitment and it's really a pro forma in a way but we're doing our due diligence so um, uh, you could could be have you well maybe that's insulting to say have you read the the handout it is insulting it is insulting i agree uh, uh, pat please yeah but what i wanted to say is i think uh, that yeah. currently the finance committee meets uh once a week or whatever it is andy i got it in my books um do, um for the net or for the next three months the finance committee will be because that's what we're or until january however you want to say that but saying what those dates are now and not having the time limit of the council change um, could mean somebody honestly says yes and then they can't because we changed the meeting time in January. So here, Pat, the idea is that all it says is currently the finance committee meets twice a month during the year, but when budget season begins in April and May, meetings become much more frequent. Yeah. Um, and we could and have you, a quite, are you comfortable with, or can you confirm? So it should be a question. Okay. Um, that's what I'm suggesting. Uh, can you confirm uh, that you uh, have the time to commit to this meeting schedule? That's fine. And the idea is that we're not gonna have, a, as, Ma as Mandy pointed out, it's not gonna be a, a three minute discussion. It's basically they're just saying yes. And if, if they kind of look hesitant or they kind of pause, that would be perhaps telling, but I think it's just pro forma. Darcy. Um, can I talk about something else? Yeah, no, please. I, unless if anyone has no concern, I think we're agreed. This would, this, we're agreed this should be a question. Which one? The number six. I don't know what number it'll be in the end, but we should ask a question. Something like this should be part of the interview. Yes. Adopt interview questions. Pat says yes. I say yes. I assume, Darcy, you say yes, fine. and fine. fine, thank you. So yes, please, Darcy, uh, go ahead. If you have another question or you wanna change or reword something, please. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at number three because okay. um, it's, as it stands, just could be answered yes or no. Exactly, this is, um, I agree, that needs, needs work. So it seems like it should be, um, what is your understanding of the role of the finance finance committee or something like that. Like that. Right. Um, so that at least we don't get a yes or no. I agree. Again, are people do they think this is a legit a good question? Will this produce a fruitful uh, you know answer? Um, it sounds good to me, and it's it's worded in the correct format. So clearly, they need to say something other than yes or no. Um, Mandy. 
Um, yes to your, your questions there. Number three is good to me. Um, I wanted to talk about number one. Okay, good. Well, I want to go. I understand. Good. This is great. Okay. But I want to make sure that we're agreed with each of these questions. So that when we come back to this at the end, somebody says, well, I actually don't like questions. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So it sounds like three is okay and six is okay. Um, all right. So I'm just going to highlight. Let me see if I can highlight them. Go ahead, Mandy, please. You had a thought about another one. Yeah. Um, I was starting with the first one. Um, Look, yeah. You, you left it crude. sort of this unfinished. Is... This, yes, this is, is yes. always a good question. Um, we've added the please include any experience in, in, in the CRC questions for ZBA and planning board because that gets to people who have um, who are currently serving on the committee versus and, and to those that aren't. So I would add um, into that list yep. in you know experience in budgets, financial planning, service on municipal service on financial committees, other financial committees, um, and then also municipal finance as a specific thing. Service on or attendance at financial committee meetings or something, you know, um, and then just municipal finance is one of the, I think I put municipal finance after financial planning and before the service one. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, involving uh, budgets, financial planning, municipal finance, and service on or attendance at other financial committee. Sounds kind of weird. I'm sorry, we can work it. But again, just generally speaking, this seems like a good question, which just gets them to tell us about their background and, you know, and this. Um, so what do you feel you bring to the FinCom that can, that can make it successful? Please include any experience you have in matters involving budgets, financial planning, municipal finance, or service on or attendance at other finance committee meetings or finance committees. Committees or meetings. It should be finance or financial. Does it if other? Uh, oh, no, other finance committees or meetings. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, finance. Committees, committees or meetings or meetings okay it's a bit wordy but i don't mind it's, we want to make it as expansive as possible so people don't feel like well gee you know i actually haven't had much experience with that or that but um maybe did it with my uh volunteer organization right exactly so it's good um darcy oh i did not intend to have my hand up all right Sorry. it's okay that's all right um so are people comfortable with one as it reads um what do you feel you bring to the FinCom that can make it successful? Please include any experience you have in matters involving budgets, financial planning, municipal finance or service, but excuse me, finance comma, or service on or attendance at other finance committees or meetings. It's a bit awkward. Um, what do you think? Leave it good enough? Sure. For government work? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I I do have one comment. Um, does this leave out the person who um, attends all the town council meetings or watches them on Amherst Media or whatever and, uh, right. and knows and like studies the town budget and knows every damn thing about it right. way more yeah. than I do? And, um, uh, you know, there's that, there's, you know, right. I think there's a bunch of people out there that know a right. lot about the town budget, but, um, and they may just know it by studying it. Right, you know? right, 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 um, right, right. I don't know how to include those. I mean, th those yeah. are the people sort of that's, that have an interest in it, right. uh, but may not be professionals, you know? Right, right. So, right, right. Um, and that, is and you don't things. think this covers that? You think this is a little bit too? It's it doesn't really give them the the space to talk. It doesn't say invite them to describe exactly what you described. They'd feel like, well, that's not relevant to number one, so I can't bring that up. And we'd like to make it relevant. We'd like to you know basically tell us about your engagement in um, any experience. You could can say I? any experience or interest you have. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Bring, uh, mm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna wait. Go yeah, Mandy's hand is up, please. 
Yeah, so if we get rid of the or between finance or service where that red line is, and then add a comma after meetings, we can add or any other relevant experience you may, or any other information you feel is relevant, something like that. Yeah, something and that like would cover it. That's, that would be so good. So here um, you want to insert something? Yes. So insert or other relevant information. Let me or, just make sure. What I did I make say? Sure. I'm or sure. other relevant or how did I word it before? Or any other relevant experience? And I think the word experience is expansive enough to include what Darcy just described. Um, I would yeah, we, we make it too expansive, but yeah, I hear you. I hear Darcy's concern. I think it's legitimate. I hear your suggestion. I just don't want to make it so big that it basically, <laughs> you know, I was out, uh, you know, putting, yeah, okay. Uh, Pat. I would change this whole thing uh, and say something like, I, I would simplify it because I feel like you're leading people down a path yeah. and um, you don't want your answers or your directions uh, in the body of the question. Why can't it, can it say what question. relevant, yeah. what relevant experiences do you feel like you'd bring to FinCom that would make it successful? Uh, and then, you know, pleasing i don't know these are the interview questions these are not this is not the soi we're not trying to lead them down a path but there are things we're looking for pat we really want people to talk about so there is a certain amount of a leading in the sense that if you make it but if so they don't general, talk about if yeah. they don't talk about something that we think is important isn't that an indicator that they're not they don't have the knowledge base that we want i don't know yeah but it yeah is, I, yeah yeah, yeah. I'll go with the majority of the committee, but I just think that this should be simplified. Okay, you think it's too complex and we are kind of leading people in a certain direction and yeah. you are uncomfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm wondering if uh, I hear that and we'll come back. Uh, Andy, I'm sorry, Andy had his hand up. and I So Andy, please go ahead. <sighs> Yeah, just real quick, I, I agree with the direction you're going. I lost uh, connection for a few minutes, but I'm back. Uh, you know, knowledge is a word to consider. Some of you just used the word knowledge because um, when I think about residents who frequently are in attendance at our meeting, in our virtual meetings, uh, and then end up conversations with me after, have a lot of knowledge. So knowledge is a valuable word. Um, doesn't mean you have to be on a committee or have experience servicing on a committee, but you know about it. And you can ask, well, how did you get the knowledge? I mean, those are follow-up questions you can ask as an interview, but uh, I agree that you want to make sure that you um, don't exclude people who just know a lot about it and have a lot of interest. Right. So what if we inserted... Um... You could end right there and you could have a separate question. Um, please describe any other ex service and or please describe any other service and or attendance at other finance committee committees or meetings or any other relevant experience. Uh, any other, uh, well, yeah, you could do that. Um, separate out um, the specific question, which is basically trying to get at their experience and knowledge about matters involving budgets, financial planning, municipal finance, and then have a separate question um, about experience um, on other kinds of bodies involving finance um, or any other kind of relevant experience. What do people think about a separate question? So two questions rather than one. Uh, Darcy, your hand is up, please. We are going to share the selection guidance with the applicants, right? Yes, we are. So um, why, I mean, it seems like we're kind of reinventing the selection guidance in this question. And we could just say, please, um, yep. please include how you fulfill our selection guidance. Um, and then it would cover, they know what the selection guidance is. Yeah. Yeah. And we could read it at the interview if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then we don't 
had, I mean, this seems like it's reinventing it. Um, and okay. it's up okay. to them to just tell us how they fulfill it. And okay. I mean, it seems yeah. like it's easier yeah. than right, you know, I don't yeah. know. I, no, I know, I know. It's back to that point of kind of leading them. In a it's already direction. there. It's there. It, yeah. You, you could say, expanding on Darcy's thing, the please include could be, um, please reference any experience or knowledge you have related to the selection guidance provided. Yeah. Period. Okay, I guess, yeah. Okay, okay. Um. I see two paths here in front of us. One is the path that we started on that I was kind of leaning towards, which is basically specifying specific things that we want them to respond to. Because after all, we're asking these questions to elicit certain, we're looking for information. And so we want to give them as much guidance as possible so that these answers are fruitful to us. Um, that's one path. The other path is it, read the selection guidance. If they don't read it, that tells us something right away. And secondly, sort of make it broader. And uh, this is kind of Pat's point. Don't be so leading. Darcy seems to be leading in that direction too. So I see two different ways of going here. Um, this was based on the CRC approach and Mandy can speak for herself, but my impression was it was more, you know, it had very specific things they wanted people to, to talk about. And, and, and what I'm hearing from at least two of you is um, yes, we do want them to talk about certain things, but we're going to kind of leave it up to them to uh, decide what they want to bring to the fora or not, rather than specifying it since it's in the selection guidance. So uh, I see at least two of you leading in that path. Um, and I'm willing to go that way. Um, but that would mean rewording this uh, dramatically, which is fine. That's what we're doing. Um, anyone leaning more toward the path I started out, which is being more specific? Sounds like people are more are willing to go in a more general way. So let's just try something here and see. Um, let me just, so would you start with, what do you feel you bring to the FinCom that could make it successful? Or do you wanna make it a totally separate question, which is based on the selection guidance, um, what, please, let me just start a new question for a moment. Based, and people just speak up here. I'm just, we're just gonna wordsmith here. We're brainstorming. Um, we're going to keep it simple, keep it short. Based on the selection guidance, um, what do you feel you bring to the FinCom? It could be as simple as that. Yeah. Would that, you know, based on select. So just up here, uh, let me get rid of this for a second. Okay. Um, based on the selection guidance. Oops. What do you feel you bring to FinCom? It could just be as simple as that. What do you feel you bring to FinCom that can make it successful? And I would just take all of this out. I'm not gonna do it actually yet, but that's what I'm suggesting. What do you think of that? So the Feels idea is, okay yeah. I'm sorry? Feels okay to me. Yeah, I, thank you, Pat. I think this is in your spirit, Pat, of keeping the questions as simple and direct as possible not being leading and Darcy's point that it's in the, the selection guidance. And if they start talking about, you know, uh, how they lead a Boy Scout troop or they, uh, you know, like to go mountain climbing, um, that would tell us something right away. Okay. Darcy, your hand is up. Oh, sorry. All right. I'm just <laughs> trying to do my job. Just trying to do my job here. here. <laughs> so we have three questions so far. Um, and I wonder about three. Let's go back to that. I mean, I think it's okay. I was pretty open and be, I'd be interested to see what people say about it. That would be an interesting question to see how people answer that. So I like that. So we like three. How about two? Are people, this is one that's commonly asked. Um, it's generally, I think, a good question. Um, you know, um, do people want it? Do they think it's useful or do they want to just, um, um, it has been a very interesting, produced some very interesting answers in CRC, in CRC interviews for planning board and ZBA. Um, I support the rest of the questions. I don't have any changes to them. Okay, so- Yeah, what you and said, I agree. 
you're saying that it's been fruitful. I mean, interesting is a vague word. You mean fruitful. You learned, you learned some interesting stuff, right? No, good, good. That's good. So one, two, three, um, four. Yeah, I have a comment about four. Please. It seems like um, that, I don't know why it's phrased like that because what, what's, what are the possible answers? Yep. You know, I feel angry. You know, <laughs> I feel right. I'm you know, insulted. Whatever, I'm insulted you know, by this. <laughs> all the different feelings that I'm talking to my right. two year old grandchild about. Right. But anyway, um, it seems like it should be rephrased so that it's like um, non voting member, or, you know, right. Uh, residents are non voting members. Um, how do you? How, what well, I guess it's sort of the same. Like? Yeah, no. that kind of thing is sort of like um, no. what? How can how can or maybe just like how can a non-voting member contribute or something like that? Yeah, uh, no, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously, we know that non-voting members contribute a lot, um, and uh, so I don't know what we're getting at there. Are we, right, are we getting right. at that that you know like? they're going to to somehow throw a monkey wrench in the works or right exactly it's, it's badly yeah. worded it's badly worded um so yeah i guess um yeah what are we trying to get from this um um is how is it different from three um you know uh because obviously your role on fincom is it, it, again it would tell us something if they if they're not aware that they're not, a, you know, so I wonder if four is even needed. Yeah, I think that people, you know, like if they're angry about the fact that residents are non-voting members, they're probably not going to even apply to do it, right. you know, exactly. and right. so, uh, you know, they've already accepted that they're going to be a non-voting member. Right. I guess I just feel like, um, you know, we might want to add that to number three. Just add it as a. What is your understanding of the role of as a non as a non voting member of of no, FinCom? No, no, no. I wouldn't say as a non voting member. No, no, I think no, right, they're right. two right. different questions. Yeah, what they are. Two different. Different. Yeah, yeah. But why don't we just take well, it out? How, mm -hmm. Or something maybe like what tensions does being an advisory member of the body. Um, my what tensions might it bring up for you? I don't and know. What, why we? Yeah, what? Do we, I think Darcy's point is a good one. What are we actually trying to get with it? What's the point of this question? The others, I think, we're pretty clear what we're looking for. This one just seems, you know, unless we can more hone it, it's kind of like, what's the point? Um, right. What are we going mean, to get from them that would I'm be useful? okay deleting it completely? Yeah. I think Darcy yeah. makes a good point. I'm also okay with adding a phrase into number three: understanding yeah. of the role of the finance committee and us your role and non, your role as, as a, a non-voting non -voting member. member yeah that would work let's just put it in for a moment okay and presumably the answer to the second part of that is the same answer that they'll give for number one basically what what they bring right yeah yeah no but well, there's a difference between the role of the finance committee in in town government and in, in decision making that feels different to me somehow. Yeah, th those are definitely two different questions: the role of the finance and the role of a non-voting member on the committee are two different questions. We could combine them into one, like it is here now. I, I like that. I, yeah, um, Darcy, your point that somehow one and three are connected. Um, we're looking for something very different in one. And if the question isn't clear enough and your question suggests, or your comment suggests that it's not, do we need to go back to one? And, and I, it's, cause we, I, I take it with one, we're really tr asking them to tell us about your knowledge and experience base relevant to finance matters. That's what we want. And if they don't, that's telling, but hopefully they will. And that will be even more telling Are people comfortable that one is clear enough that people will do that they'll understand that what we want here is your knowledge base and experience base um, relevant to this election guidance what we want in three 
is your sense of what you think the role of income is generally and your role as a non-voting member. Now, those are different questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, they're, I think really, they're good. Yeah, yeah. I don't really like mixing the two and three because um, we it'll be difficult in an interview setting um, because they're they're completely different questions to get them to respond to both of them unless so you'd, you'd prefer a separate question if we have it at all you'd prefer a separate question which is what is your understanding of your role as a non-voting member yeah uh, and again we're back to the point what are we trying to elicit from that question you know other than just you know vague bromides or else somebody suddenly just jumping up and saying you know i just i so resent that you know but that's silly so yeah that's i think I think what we want to elicit is somebody saying something like, um, you know, I have a lot to contribute, as I said in number one. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I'm on the committee, I expect that my my opinion is going to be respected. Um, it'll probably be mentioned in reports one way or the other, and that, that I'll be, be able good. to contribute okay. that way. That would be um, good to hear. That would be good to hear, or not, you yeah. know. Um. <clears throat> Quickly, three, um, show of hands. You want to leave it as it is and, and the whole sentence, or do you want to? Uh, so, how many would prefer to Which leave it? Which way are we both? What is your understanding of the role of FinCom, period? No. Or I'm what not. is the understanding, um, blah, 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 and your role as a non voting member? How many of you are comfortable with exactly that? The, the latter. Which one? The latter. <laughs> okay, the, one, okay. the last one you just spoke. Yeah. Yeah. I know what latter means, sweetie. So yes or no? I'm uh, it, doesn't to me. It, it doesn't matter to Mandy. I think it it's fine. works for me. Works for you, Darcy. You prefer perhaps separate questions, or is it okay? Yeah, I'm afraid that it, it, it will get they'll somehow get mushed together. Nobody's going to say it's going to really piss me off because right. why would they apply? <laughs> I, let's leave, Why I don't say, we just split it up into two separate questions? What is your understanding of the role of the finance committee? And then question four, what is your understanding of your role as a non-voting member? Fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, I was hoping to have just five questions, but good, there's one, two, three, four. It five, five, plus a 15 second answer. Okay, sorry, I did, I always do that. Okay, we're just gonna take this out. So what else would you like to know, uh, oh, excuse me, what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the finance committee? Okay. You know, maybe that's where the Boy Scouts or mountain climbing or, you know, studying Sanskrit would come in handy. Um, and then finally, currently the Finance Committee meets twice a month during the year, but when budget season begins, all hell breaks loose. Um, so can you confirm that you have the time and commitment to this uh, absurdly demanding meeting schedule? Okay, and that's just a flag and good. You'll have three minutes to answer each question, one through five. You'll have- uh, Don't put the six, do not do not put. Absolutely. And you will have 8.3 seconds to answer question number six. No. <laughs> no. Just, don't so, put that at all. <laughs> People aren't stupid. Well, uh, we have had experience. <laughs> no, well, actually- So Pat, Pat I, we have I, I had experience with, with questions <laughs> like this that they go on for three minutes to yes. answer, which is- Well, then you don't want them. 15 seconds. <laughs> You don't want them. <laughs> you could just Do say, what you want. Okay. why don't you just say, we just need a yes or no answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of 15 seconds. I hear you. Okay. Okay. Pat yeah. doesn't like that. So we're going to take that out. I, I don't want unhappy <laughs> committee members. You will have up to three minutes to answer each of the questions. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. And if somebody, we had an experience the last time, I'm not going to name any names. Um, but we had a candidate who just really liked to talk and went on and on and on. And it George just, Ryan? No, I'm sorry. I, I, I said a candidate. <laughs> and I am the chair, so I get to speak more than I know, else. sweetie. I just like teasing you. I know you do. As painful as it is to me, that's all right. I just smile. So, 
We just have to change the references to CRC to yeah, GeoWall. I know. I, exactly right. I agree. Questions will be asked by members of the GOL committee. All advocates will answer each question after it is asked in a random order determined by the GOL committee chair. I want to make sure I understand that. All applicants will answer each question after it is asked. I, so, Fred Bandy, please. What what I do is in order to not have the per like if you have three candidate four candidates and you ask the first question one two three four and the second question candidate two three four one right, right. they're always responding behind the same candidate. So I mix it up. I mix the order up so that everyone, well, as many people as possible, go first, go second, go third, go fourth, but they're right. not always responding behind the same person. Yeah, that's good. I hear you. That makes good sense to me. And that's what, so that's that, what means. that means. Exactly. All applicants will answer each question before moving on to the next question. That's very clear. If you have questions, please contact Pat DeAngelis um, at, yep. uh, at DeAngelis. About B. time. Yeah, it's about time. And, you know, preferably uh, and give her phone number as well. Um, <laughs> and, uh, okay, so we have a document in front of us and it is the GL interview questions for FinCom applicant interviews. I'm going to take away the word draft. And I am going to um, try this, see what happens. Uh, okay, accept all changes so um and i think you would like me to write this out right i use fincom because yes. i'm lazy so um i will go back and make those changes i'll make some of them as i speak um as you look this document over while i make these changes any other concerns um, i'm sorry let me get this out of here let me make this look the way it should look um and need a question anything? mark at the end of question three. Three. Yeah. So let's do this. What's your understanding of the role of the finance committee? And you can say adopted October 6th up there. Thank you. October 6th, 2021. And um, anything else that you see? Um, uh, can I make a motion? Uh, I just want to make sure we got this right. Uh, but yes, go ahead and make the motion. We can still go ahead, Mandy, please. I move to adopt the interview questions for finance committee applicant interviews as amended at today's meeting. Second. We have a motion that has been seconded. Any other, let me get rid of all the highlighting because that's no longer relevant. Um, and uh, Andy so has his hand up. Andy, please. Yeah, um, I haven't been participating, but I've been certainly listening very, watching very carefully. I think you guys have done a great job. I think this is a good set of questions. Uh, so what I'm just gonna say is uh, sort of uh, maybe as you go into how this plays out, I think that the two things that I probably would be most disappointed about is if we end up with a member who is uh, not really thinking about seriously um, serving for a significant enough period of time to encompass that two years we were talking about. For example, somebody who's uh, in the community on a temporary basis and is not um and, and you we kind of that gets missed the other thing that i would be concerned about is if we end up with somebody who joins the finance committee because they are um wanting to use the platform to advocate for one particular program or interest and um are not uh, prepared to look at the whole balance of demands on limited finances, which is really what makes this such a difficult topic to begin with. Uh, you, uh, um, you have to look at all needs and not just your, the need that you're advancing um, personally for in order to really come up with something that's going to be a balanced product in the end result. 
Um, and I guess I'll throw in one last piece is that you've not at any time talked about the charter and the chart and how the in the what the charter says is the role of the uh, finance, you know, the, the how the budget process works because of what the charter drives, the town manager proposes a budget and what the role of the, uh, the finance committee and the council is in dealing with the town manager's budget. And I think that you're fine with that in the way you phrase the questions because it really gets into the whole question of what's your understanding of municipal finance. Uh, but I do hope that as you're doing the interviews, you're looking out for those kinds of things. So thank you. Andy, thank you. And thank you for your time helping us this, this morning. Um, yeah. I'm, we're about to vote, but I'm still making a few minor changes as you can see. Um, but there is an issue with question two, which at the moment is not in English. Um, would you say where opinions are in conflict? Where opinions, yeah, are in conflict. Is that, is that what people have in mind? Um, so tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with the group, particularly where opinions were, I guess, were in conflict or the decision was controversial. Yes. Yeah. In the right place. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Do you think that these were in conflict? I'm sorry, Darcy? Do you think that we should change the order of the question so that number two is just um, later on? Because it seems like three and four are more basic questions. And like if I were putting them in order, I would put yeah. two as four and yeah. put three and four before that one because it gets into more detail. Um, so you yeah. would suggest it doesn't it seem here. like it should be the very second question, you know. Um, uh, does that make sense? Yes, it yes. does. So what we have now, and I think the order of the questions is also important, because um, uh, we would follow this order. Actually, we should think what order do we want to follow, and we, I would assume we would follow the order as it's written here. So that's a very good point, Darcy. And I think we would start with number one. Number two and number three. Number four would be an experience you've had collaborating with a group, particularly where the opinions were in conflict, decision was controversial. Number five, what else would you like to tell us about yourself? You know, you tripped to Nepal or whatever. And number six, um, finance committee meets twice a month. I think the order is good. I think it's an excellent point. And if you want to save time on the last one, you can actually preface it by saying, this is a yes or no question, or this is a short answer question or something, you know. Yeah, just... no, I hate currently things. Can you confirm that you can say that? We could just write, um, what do you can think? You can... Yeah, th can you confirm that you have this? This is a yes or no question. Yeah. And in like... a way, it, yeah, I know it's, 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 we're hoping people, yeah. Thoughts on that? This is a yes or no question. Is that too? Please answer yes or no. Yeah, please answer yes or no. And that's it. Don't, I think don't... that works. I mean, they're going to laugh when they read this, but because <laughs> no, but our point again for the public who's watching this and scratching their heads is that this is really simply our attempt to make it absolutely clear um, to the candidate what is involved. And so um, there's a point to this question, even though the answer is going to be yes in every case. OK, good. Thank you, Darcy. That's excellent. Um, so I've made all the changes that I think I saw. Um, and other than Scrivener errors, I take it we can uh, now vote on this as presented. And so I'm going to start this time actually with Darcy. Yes. And Mandy. Aye. And Pat. Aye. And the chair is also an aye. So the vote is 4 to 0. Uh, none in opposition and one absent uh, to adopt these interview questions. All right, very good. Um, I'm going to put that, I'm going to stop sharing with that. I'm going to move that over there. And now I'm going to put a timeline up. Um, because I want you to, uh, we need to agree on a timeline if we can. I want to make sure my timeline is absolutely correct. That's always a concern. So here's the timeline. Um, let's take a quick look at it. So um, 
The vacancy notice was published on September 14th. There have at to the point been no new applicants. So we have still only eight in the active pool. We did declare the pool active, excuse me, declare the pool sufficient <laughs> on 929. I did, as you saw, contact the finance chair for input on selection guidance. Oh, we do have a question actually. Oh crap, sorry. Um, Part of our process is asking the uh, council for questions they want us to ask. I know, I told you at the beginning of the I meeting. I know you did, Pat, I know you did. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm comfortable with, um, I'm not sure what I'm comfortable with here. I'm actually, <laughs> we'll come back to that in just a well, second. Why don't you just send off what we just adopted to the council and say, if you have any additional you'd like us to consider, email yeah. them to us that you'd like us to consider, but you only have five seconds to answer and do not assume it will be used. Yeah, right, so no, that's, that's, we, yeah. we always, and, and you know, they're, they're not always all adopted, but, but um, yeah, and then yeah. we can go, because the interview questions don't have to go off with the SOIs to the candidate. Right. They can well, go that's, later. That's, well, let's they see. They just that's, have to be a week before the interview. Uh, that is correct. So what you're suggesting is that the chair in the future, the chair should have done this before we had this meeting and before we had this conversation, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. But in this case, he can still send this out and ask for people to send him, um, you know, any questions they might have and make it clear in that communication that we will consider them, but it doesn't mean that we'll add them. Okay. Especially if we're intending to interview at our next meeting. Well, that's the problem um, that we're not going to have a chance to meet as a committee to make that determination. Um, and so uh, to add any interview questions, we would have to change this schedule. And that's what we well, may have to do. But if, I, I, yeah. if we gave a deadline of this Friday yeah. to yeah. council members uh, and then you contacted us each in, about saying, here are some of the questions and we could give you feedback individually. I, I am happy to leave the choice up to George if he gets any requests yes. okay. to determine That's whether fine. to add them or not. That's absolutely well, fine. Well, I actually am not um, because, and I mean this for any chair, not just me, but any chair going forward, it puts the chair in an awkward position and a position that could be abused. Uh, and I'm not saying I would abuse it, but it certainly could be tempting. If I had, a, if somebody asked a question that um, you know I would like personally to ask, and I put it on there, um, having not consulted any of you, uh, you would be rightly uh, upset. And so that's my problem. Um, you're trusting me and I, I appreciate that, um, but I could make a decision that later you would say that just makes no sense to me. And I, you know, um, I'm uncomfortable putting questions on this document that are going to go out to candidates and are going to be asked in public that you all haven't voted on. And that's what you're basically saying. And that's the problem. So- Could we, we add another meeting on the 27th? We could the council try- council votes it, not till November 8th. Could right. we do the interviews on the 27th? And I, and I have two reasons for asking this. Um, surveillance we haven't gotten to when we have 25 minutes left in this meeting and surveillance can't wait till after no, until the November GOL meeting to be done because it needs two readings at the council for passage. And so you mean in, in this council term is what you're in saying. this council term, right. which right. I think Pat and I would I know you would like that and I, exactly. I and so I don't that. really want to see it wait until the November meeting for even consideration. And it so depends look, on how many right. applicants we have at finance as to how long it will take to do interviews. So are you suggesting adding one possibility to address both of these questions would be to add another GOL meeting a week from today. That would be fine too. Um, I think. Well, it's it's a bad time of year for everybody. Um, well, not everybody. <laughs> we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> I can make a meeting on either the thirteenth or the twenty seventh. Uh, I can make a, a meeting on the thirteenth and the twenty seventh. All right. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. I need to check myself. Darcy, if you would kindly check and you're perfectly free to say you don't want to do it, that's quite all right. But we're looking at adding a meeting. And the reason we add the meeting is one, to deal with the interview question problem. 
And uh, second is to deal with the technology bylaw problem. Um, and, and Mandy, your thought is that if we wait until October, we will be waiting to at least October 20 to act on that. Um, that would still work. I mean, the council gets two readings and here's the, here's the schedule, so. Yeah, no, I, I think surveillance, if we can act on the 20th, but eight, if we actually get eight SOIs back and the pool remains at eight, I don't yep. think it will. But if it actually does, the only thing that will happen on the 20th is interviews and deliberation because five questions at Just three the time. minutes no, the each time is, is yeah, yeah. you know, is 15 minutes per candidate if they take all three. Um, okay. Um, I was aiming for November 8. Um, what if we did interviews on October 27th? Just we did technology here. We did interviews on the 27th. That would still give us a chance that would still hit make um, the November 8 deadline. Um, and the reason I'm pushing the November 8 deadline is that there is some desire to get the new member on board as soon as possible. Uh, yeah. If we can, if we can do it, if we can't, we can't, but how about we do um, October 20 stays uh, you know, technology bylaw, right? October 27 would be, um, so I would do this. Let me just write this, put this in for a second. 27 and that would be um and interviews then were, only interviews only interviews and deliberation yes that's right so and october be, 20th would be tech, finished tech bylaw, interview right. questions and surveillance tech bylaw right 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 so because again i just am really uncomfortable with the chair whoever he or she may be adding interview questions without you voting on them um just bad things could happen and, and I don't want that. I want you to, so, and it's partly, my, it's, well, it's my fault for not getting this out to the council at the time. Um, what do people feel about that? So we'd be adding a, uh, a meeting on October 27th. Darcy, you haven't said anything. Um, you don't have to, but uh, is it, would you be open to a meeting on the 27th, which would be um, interviews and deliberation only? Um. I or do you want to think about yeah, it? I, I feel yeah. like I feel like there there's not an actual reason for us to have to rush um, to um, but you know like I'm available on Wednesday mornings generally but I okay. don't, right. don't like meeting every week you know I don't think we should be feeling like we I, I get how we, there's a rush to get the finance committee thing done, so that's fine. But um, and I don't necessarily think that we need to do everything by the book for this particular set of appointments, as far as getting um, asking the council for interview questions, because we have the ability to say this is a one-off because it's the very first and we started it at half, you know, we passed the, the unified policy when after we'd already started, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I not, I would not be upset if we didn't solicit the council, but um, okay. so anyway, that's, that's how I feel. The, the other option, if you go back down to the council schedule is if GOL has a November 3rd meeting scheduled, that could be the interviews. We do have a meeting November because 3rd that's November before 3rd. the November eighth council meeting. Um, that is correct. That is correct. Um, so that would allow us to solicit the interview questions from counselors to discuss at October twenty. Do surveillance on October twenty. Do the interviews on November third, and that would still make the November eighth council meeting. All right. Um, so let me try this. Without adding an actual extra meeting. I'm sorry. Oh, damn it. Oh. All right, let's try this. Yeah, I, that's a thought. I, Bear with me. Darcy has. Darcy, is your hand up, please, Darcy. Yeah, I'm just asking, you know, I, I guess I don't. Do people feel strongly that we have to solicit the council for 
questions because if we already scheduled the interviews for October 20th, um, I guess I just don't understand why we can't move forward with that because that's- uh, I, I said in public um, that we would follow the process. And the right. only reason that um, we didn't do the CAFs is that we had in fact started it before the policy was adopted, but the policy has been adopted. And I said to the council at the meeting on Monday that we would follow the, the new policy. Um, and so I, I'm not comfortable with one offs at this point. Um, so uh, having said that, I think that's where I'm gonna have to go. Um, so um, can we just, uh, for the sake of the chair, whose, whose mind is starting to get a little frazzled here, um, what Mandy is suggesting is that we don't need a new, we don't need to schedule a special meeting. All we need to do is agree that on number three, we're gonna do interviews and vote, okay? And on October 20th, we're going to do um, technology bylaw, uh, surveillance bylaw, mm -hmm. right? And we will also vote on questions. If, if I mean, in all honesty, I don't think we're going to get anything. But if we do, we will review it and make a decision. So uh, questions, council questions on the 20th and the surveillance bylaw. George, based on my experience, you will get questions. Yeah, fine. Come that's on, fine. That's, I, I have no Some problem. Some of them with that. three pages long. That's all right. <laughs> and, that, and, and it's maybe that will lead us to, I mean, that's fine. And that's kind yep. of why we do this so that that could change our interview yep. questions. Um, so then go back to the calendar here and I, I bear with me for a moment. Um, so we voted on selection guidance. We have not agreed on interview questions yet. That's actually going to be now um, October 20. Correct? Yep. And uh, so- In between those two, you need to put solicit questions, interview questions from council. Uh, so- Between three and four. Question. All right, so um, solicit interview cues, right, from council. And then we will, on the 20th, we will agree on interview questions, uh, or maybe just put it this way, vote on interview questions. Um, you, they do you not can have- solicit the SOIs now. Yep. Okay, so we'll selection guidance. So that's, let's just put that date. Today is the sixth. Um, we can, I can start soliciting, but the, the deadline for them SOI deadline would now be, has um, to be around okay. October 31st, yeah. October 30th, 29th, something like that. Let's see if the October interviews 30th. are November 3rd. Oh, wait, no, sorry. If the interviews are November 3rd, the deadline somewhere has in to be the one week, 23rd, yeah. 24th. Yeah. Because they have 20th. to be posted the 27th. Right. Yeah. I mean, I could even, I mean, they're going to have almost two, if they have two weeks. Yeah. That's more than enough. Yep. But keep in mind, uh, when is the absolute deadline then? We said the absolute deadline is when I actually, when Athena actually puts the SOIs and their names up. Yeah. So that would be. Say, and that has to be by the 27th. All right. We need them before the 27th. Right. But that's under the policy, they'll have to be on the website by the 27th. Um, and the interview would be November. 27th. No, no. Sorry, November 3rd. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, That's sorry, all right. sorry. That's all right. That's all right. And the vote, our vote would be also the third. Yeah, it's got to be. Right. And the council vote would be. Uh, November, you have it October. Not October. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you. And the council vote is November 8th. Um, all right. Good. So that is that. Um, are are you still unsure about the SOI deadline? Yeah, I just well the SOI okay. deadline. That's fine. That's well, no, fine. actually, let me just think out loud here. Um, 
is, um, yeah, that could, we could push that a little later because if I'm going to post them on the 27th, um, I'll play with that, but it's some, some yeah. in that period. Um, okay. Okay. Can we still make the November 8th vote and November 8th council decision. That's great. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to move that over as well. Um, and stop sharing. All right, we need, it is now 11, 12, 16, and we do have a set of minutes to approve and we have to make a decision about surveillance, the technology, excuse me, the surveillance technology bylaw. And um, I appreciate the sponsors forbearance. This took obviously longer than we expected, but we have devoted now um, October 20th meeting to that uh, bylaw. And, um, I don't know if people had a chance to look at the documents. Um, there are substantial comments from the lawyer and there's a memo from the lawyer. And um, I wanna keep in my own mind clarity that what we're looking at is um, actionability, right? Clear, consistent and actionable. And mm -hmm. the lawyer's memo said, this is actionable. So there was nothing in what the lawyer sent to us that said, this is not actionable. The issue now is clarity and consistency. Um, and so a lot of the comments that are raised by the attorney in their uh, document, um, and I, this we'll talk about next time. I guess this is like a preface to our deliberation. Um, the sponsors have had a chance to, to read those comments. I don't think they've spoken directly to the attorney. I believe it's just, you just work with, right? And I take it you have no particular um, motivation or interest or desire to speak to them or to no. have them present at our meeting. No. Can you explain why? Because I, I would think, normally think I would like to have the attorney present I think when we're that doing this because this comments, is really complicated. Yeah. Uh, their comments on the whole are um, clear. We've responded uh, to most of them. Um, some of them are incredibly invaluable by like notifying us that our numbering of the bylaw is incorrect, which, you know, that's kind of ridiculous. Um, I just have to say that. <laughs> but we've worked on, uh, we've accepted all of, I'm pretty sure we've accepted all of their um, right. Right. edits, their, their concerns. Word changes, except for one set. Okay. Right, which one? Uh, and that fine. was because I, I, they, that one set was they conflicted with what our intention on cruiser camera, vehicle cameras were. Right. And right. so they had suggested adding it into the exceptions if we intended the exceptions, but we didn't intend cruiser cameras to be accepted. So right. we right. would not accept right. that change. Um, yeah, it's so, their so, error. So, um, let me see what else. Oh, they suggested that we have put in a purpose, which we aren't. I thought we had decided that weren't necessary for bylaws and the severability clause. Um, we have said in our general bylaws that the, there's a right. single severability. So I don't think we need that, uh, either of those two things. But we have a, a purpose available right. for our next meeting. If, Good. If and that we would talk change. about that in terms of clarity yeah. and consistency, I agree. And we'd look at the comments and changes. And so just going forward, um, uh, so people know that's where we're at. And um, the other issues that they've raised um, beyond what we've just been talking about that uh, may get raised at council, and I'm, I might even raise them, um, are not relevant to clarity and consistency is my, my uh, take on this. Uh, they've raised some other yeah. concerns that are substantial but they do not um, have anything to do with what we're doing here. Is that, and, and that's something maybe for the rest of my committee members to think about, because that's my reading that um, while I have, um, we're not talking about some of those issues. We're just talking about clarity and consistency. Great. Yes. Good, that's, yes. that's my understanding. And, and there okay. were some comments that, that we didn't address because we felt they were more directed to 
when the manager, if this passes, the manager's actual proposal right. of a policy and what should be included in that or what legally needs to be in that. And so we and didn't address separate, it in the Exactly. Bylaw. That's not, okay, okay, good. Um, I'd like to go to adoption. Uh, only item on the agenda for minutes is September 29, but because you have an incompetent chair, um, actually these other two minutes were in the packets of previous meetings. So right. I'm hoping that that could be used as some kind of, you know, uh, technical or whatever to allow me to ask you to uh, approve not only the September 29 minutes, which are in the packet, and hopefully you've all had a chance to read with great care, but also the uh, minutes for uh, what are the dates? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, uh, eight, nine, uh, September 8 and uh, August 25th. They we were approved in those last meeting, George. Did we approve them? Yes. All right. Okay. I didn't see them in there. Okay. Um, I will double check that. So good. Um, at least that's my notes say that we approved August 25 uh, and September 8th at the last meeting. All right. Then um, thank you. Then I will. We have before us the September 29 minutes. I've looked at them. I have no changes or corrections to make. Um, and I don't know if anyone has any others. Uh, if you do, please raise your hand um, or Otherwise, I'm going to go immediately to a motion to approve the September 29, 21 draft minutes as presented. Second. There's a motion made and seconded. If I see no further discussion, I'm going to go to a vote. And I'm going to start with the chair this time. Uh, and the chair says aye. Mandy. Aye. And uh, Pat. Aye. And Darcy. I think I'm going to abstain because I didn't read them. That's Sorry. perfectly, that's perfectly legitimate. Um, so the vote is 3-0 with one abstention, um, and the minutes of September 29 are approved. I will get all three of them to um, Athena, and uh, we will be caught up. Uh, do we have any public present? Let me take a look. Uh, my God, we do not. Okay, uh, so there is no public present. There will be no public comment at this meeting. Future agenda items we've already dealt with. Um, at our next meeting, we're going to do the council questions and we're going to do the surveillance tech the, uh, bylaw. And nothing, I'm not aware of any other, I know there was noise made about possible resolutions or proclamations or declarations coming our way, but I have not heard anything from anyone. And again, if someone is planning such things, and this is not just to my committee members, but to the world at large, please try to get them to us in advance of the meeting so we're not dealing with them the day before. But I'm not aware of any, so hopefully we will not have any. That's it. And it is 1224. Not bad. Again, thank you all very much for your hard work today. And uh, I will see you uh, on October 20. Before then. Perhaps. Thank Take you, Emily. Thank you, Athena. Yeah. Take care.